The plane that disappeared, one of aviation's biggest mysteries, flight MH370. On March 8, 2014, a plane with 239 people on board vanished without a trace. What happened to it? Many rumors emerged, but none of them had any proof. The disappearance of flight MH370 left everyone in horror. What might have caused such a haunting event? No one really knows. Flight MH370, operated by Malaysia Airlines, was en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. One of the most experienced captains of Malaysian Airlines, Captain Zahari Ahmed Saha, was leading the flight along with First Officer Farik Hamid. This 27-year-old First Officer was soon to be a certified pilot after this test flight, but his aspiration faded away. Just an hour after takeoff, flight MH370 disappeared from radar. The control tower in Kuala Lumpur could not explain this odd occurrence. Despite extensive search efforts, no confirmed debris was found for over a year. How could a modern airliner just vanish? The search for MH370 became one of the largest in history. Teams from around the world scoured the Indian Ocean, trying to find a lead that could give them some explanation. But the plane's wreckage remained unknown. Satellites, ships, and planes covered millions of square miles across the South Indian Ocean. But the vanishing of MH370 remained an unsolved mystery. With no solid answers, theories arose. Some said it was a technical failure. Others concluded more extreme thoughts. A hijacking? Maybe something even more sinister? The search weathered, but the theory still persisted. What do you think happened to this normal-looking flight? The plane completely vanished 30 seconds after reaching Vietnamese airspace. The air traffic control in Kuala Lumpur presumed the plane to be in Vietnamese airspace, so they didn't take heed. On the other side, the Vietnamese saw a plane entering their airspace but suddenly vanished. Panic arose, and they kept on trying to connect with the airliner but received no response from the other side. They immediately informed Kuala Lumpur that the plane suddenly vanished from their radar. Normally, this incident should have been reported to Kuala Lumpur's Aeronautical Coordination Center within an hour. But four hours passed, and nobody knew that MH370 went missing in the dark of night. The time is 6 a.m., the arrival time of the airline at the Beijing airport, but no plane arrives. The news starts to settle in, and immediately a search operation is called to figure out this absurd disappearance. Without enough data on the plane's location, but a clue to where it was last seen, the South China Sea, the search begins. Cries of the family members of the passengers fill the air, and the news spreads across the world. 34 ships, 28 aircrafts from seven different countries try to locate the plane all over the South China Sea, but not even a single piece of the aircraft is found. On March 4th, a new lead was found. The plane vanished from the civilian radar, but that night, a military radar spotted the plane. According to the radar, the plane was seen at 2 o'clock in the morning, but its location wasn't in the south of China, but far west near the Adaman and Nicobar Islands. People were still processing this information until another lead presented itself. The place before completely vanishing into the void left behind a clue to its last location, satellite data. The plane tried multiple times to log into that satellite, but its location was still hidden. But this login data was a big catch. The scientists and researchers analyzed this data immensely and figured out a rough estimate where the plane could have gone. An arc deep in the Pacific Ocean, 2,000 kilometers west of Australian coast. This never before explored area is also known as the Seventh Arc. Many search operations were conducted in this region. All the world united on this great misery. Professional scuba divers and ships were called from around the world. They searched every nook and cranny of the ocean. The surface and seabed was thoroughly investigated. But three years into this research, and not finding any leads, with more than $160 million in expenses, this search operation was concluded a lost cause. No bodies were spotted, 
and no debris was found. Until July 2015, a small piece of the right wing was found on the island of Reunion, just east of Madagascar. The news spread through the ocean to every part of the world. A year later, an American company by the name of Ocean Infinity reached out to the Malaysian government to continue the search operation. They put forward the no fine, no fee policy to conduct yet another search operation with very advanced technology to uncover the mystery of the MH370 flight. Their underwater surveillance vehicles mapped the whole seabed for any sign of that crash plane. After months of extensive research and thousands of dollars spent, they got the same fate as the other researchers. Several theories arose, but none of them could point to a probable cause of this mysterious disappearance. Some people blame the senior pilot, Captain Zahari Ahmed, for hijacking the plane and crashing it into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. They blamed his suicidal mental state and argued that the 180-degree turn the plane took could not possibly be through autopilot. People also point out that the plane en route to the Seven Arc went in between the Malaysian and Thailand's border, so it won't show up on their radar. Another very interesting thing was what people pointed to in the flight simulator in Captain Zahari Ahmed's home. A path was drawn on that simulator that was similar to the plane's path before crashing into the ocean bed. But people in charge of the search completely denied this theory. They said Captain Zahari was an experienced and competent pilot without any prior record of misconduct. This theory was ruled out, but another arose when the Malaysian police caught some fake passports. The Malaysian police, while going through the passengers' data, discovered two passengers who were traveling with stolen passports. More research showed that they were planning to settle in Europe. Their plan was to book a German flight from Beijing. Several people called them out, but the Interpol ruled out this theory on the basis of not enough evidence. After every hypothesis failed, the third and most probable theory was presented. Depressurization. It was said to be a case of plane malfunction. This theory claims that the crew, as well as the passengers, went unconscious due to the loss of oxygen, including both the pilots, Captain Zahari and his co-pilot. A sudden malfunction caused the oxygen level to drop, making it hard to breathe at that altitude. After their brains went numb, the autopilot got activated and turned the plane 180 degrees, and the plane continued the path till it finally ran out of fuel and crashed into bits in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The theories continued, and the people kept on connecting it to myths and legends. Some even went as far as to say that aliens might have abducted the plane and killed all the passengers, or the U.S. military shot the plane down. What do you think happened to the plane? A recent report by retired aerospace engineer Richard Godfrey claimed to know the exact location of the crashed plane. He combined all the data of the Boeing British satellites and new radio wave technology to lessen the search area to 40 nautical miles accuracy. He claimed that the search operation is conducted today. The plane will be found within a year. Some people criticized his methodology, while some took his side. Do you think another search operation should be conducted, or should this mystery be left unsolved? <laughs>